Hey guys, welcome back, Alex here from Again Therapy, and I'm back with another video of Blade of Darkness, unexpectedly I might add. And that's because you guys kept talking about a remastered version that should come out on Steam, so I'm here to check it out. This video is not about exposing secrets, although I will try to go through some things that you guys mentioned in the comments section of my previous videos. As always, once I finish the game, I will address the things that I believe worth addressing. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Sisters, what mysteries, what fate awaits you in the shadows of its sacred monuments?
Alright, so this is the point where you can get one of the first sword signs. I went through the comments of my other videos and it looks like some of you are getting confused regarding the sword signs and that you got a different ending for the game, which is why I shall leave this place without taking the sword sign and come back for it later to give you more of an idea about the whole concept. Fortress has been taken by an army of malevolent orcs, however their chief was no simple orc, but some more powerful being. His attack has not been decisive. It seems that his aim was not to conquer the castle, but to find something hidden there. Lord Kerman, a man of great wisdom and a worthy knight, has been taken prisoner. settlements in this region. Its principal sources of wealth are weapons-grade steel and the obsidian used for carving sacred objects. It is a very ancient site known to all races and peoples from the central kingdoms to the far peoples of the sea, unlike the other cities of the dwarves, which are generally secret places. Since time began, the dwarves have struggled against evil. Safe beneath the mountains, they have accumulated the wisdom, wealth, and power to combat the forces of darkness.
the stone hall with many pillars. The doors were thrown open and trade was established with men. On Queen Asher's death, a tomb was built in Ephira in her honor and to protect her from any further evil. The mines have been sacked by an Orkish army. The dwarves seem to have retreated before their arrival. The old story of Freyr, the dwarven hero, speaks of powerful weapons hidden in the tombs of Ephira. Perhaps you will find some answers there. In Ephira, the mad King Azud ordered his dwarven artisans to build a temple guarding the tomb of his wife, the great Queen Asha and all her secrets. A few years later, when he died, he was buried in a chapel near the temple. After that, several kings of the Ishabad were buried there. The temple and the tombs were abandoned many years ago, and since then, they have become famed as a place of peril. They say that many tomb robbers and other adventurers have disappeared there, giving it the reputation of an accursed spot. All the actions of the enemy seem to suggest a search for some particular object or information which they didn't find in Tel Alaf or Tel Begin. Their next target will probably be Ephira. <coughs>
Mazda, heavy of heart at the sin of his sons, the gods, withdrew himself to the far depths of the universe. And how since then he has not been seen by the Avestus, from where the wise men say he will only return at the end of time.
of the king and queen have not yet been desecrated. And they contain powerful weapons that will be of great assistance. Other fell creatures have joined the orcs and the trolls, undoubtedly the fruits of necromancy. Could it be that a wizard or sorcerer is behind all this destruction? The marking of the tower and the eye of the map is undoubtedly the strongest clue to the enemy's origin. the lake of Karun, and in the middle of the lake there is an isle. In ancient times a tower was built on the isle, creating a guarded pass between the mountains which separates the ancient realms from the deserts to the north. 
For centuries, Tower of the Isle of Caron was a bastion for the knights in the inhospitable and perilous lands of Zagreb. Finally, it was lost. The knights abandoned the fortress, and so the path to commerce was closed. Knowledge of it faded from the minds of men. The map, although besmirched by an orc, clearly shows the path between the mountains which leads to the lake.
sealed the stories of the gods with cunning traps. Until the day when all that is secret will be revealed. Know that when Ayana's sword was returned to her altar, six tablets were brought into being, each one marked with a rune of power. The story of the creation of history was written on them, so that it should never be forgotten. To open the tomb of the Holy Sword, you will need the four great magical gems, and to obtain the power of the sword, the runes must be reunited. Yeah! 
his wounds he suffered in battle. His devoted friends carried his body to the temple of the goddess and entombed him there, close to the stone altar where the sword had been laid. As the shrine was closed, four beautiful gemstones magically appeared on the ground. A white opal, an aquamarine, a black obsidian stone, and an amber gem in an oval shape. Each friend made a promise to keep the secrets of the gems and decided to leave signs so they could retrieve the sword and use it to destroy evil once again. Control the mountainous region of Yerevan. 
Many years ago, however, the knights retreated from that region. Since then, a powerful orc clan has settled there. The orcs, the people who have always been independent and strong, now serve the enemy, compelled to fight by a force more powerful than they.
land in Orlok and settled among its steep gorges, taking with him his share of the treasure and the blue gem. Yolong, the knight, returned to his fiefdom in Sarakan and became Duke of his frozen castle, where the white gem has been watched over ever since. Now I want to take a moment and mention the scythe, it's a level 9 weapon that I believe many people are not using, which brings the question of why, and the answer is pretty simple at least for me. The blade of the scythe is very narrow, which makes it hard to hit with in a game that is already challenging your precision thanks to its crude controls. That is the main reason I don't use it, even though it has a couple of swings in its special attack. Having all that said, I did put it into use at the Temple of Aphira in my other Barbarian playthrough, so if you're interested, you're more than welcome to see it in action there.
the way. Come with me, let us leave this dungeon, and while we walk I shall explain to you how to recognize the signs. No! <laughs>
mounted over signs of the snail and the trident, ancient coat of arms of the fisherman of the sea. Anticipating the enemy's plans, you have succeeded in liberating Velia, a blue gem set under the sign of the snail and the trident, ancient coat of arms of the fishermen of the Sea of Vinaya.
the Avestas agreed to create a place where they would all live together, and how Ayana, the beloved daughter of the father, created in this world a beautiful garden filled with life, and how Angramanyu, the prince of darkness, visited his siblings and lived with them.
This is Burr, the white gem, an opal of perfect purity, guardian of the tomb of the sword, mounted in crystal cut from the rock as a symbol of the purity of the eternal snows of the frozen mountains. Treachery and perfidy have reached as far as the icy fortress, and its inhabitants have fallen under the dominion of a powerful demon and lost their reason. But Burr, the white gem, has been saved and mounted in ice with the tales of all its purity. The oasis of Nijeb is a four-day journey into the great sand desert. A settlement of merchants flourished there and built a beautiful palace. Over the years, the warring and the decadence of the merchant rulers brought about their downfall. The oasis was abandoned by all except a few nomad shepherds. Recently, however, the enemy has established itself in this place in a bid to control access to the Rubal Jeb Desert and the volcanic forge of Shaf.
overshadowed the aura of light and virtue that enveloped the earth. About the fight between Avestas and Archontes, and the expulsion of the opponents.
taken the place knows where the yellow and black gems are hidden. Time is of the essence in your quest. The desert of Rubal Jeb is close, as is the dormant volcano under which the forge of Shathra lies. But who will get there first? Thank you. 
Allah expelled the gods from their dwelling place and kept the earth closed to them, keeping behind her works and creatures. And how spent a manual watches over the earth from the sun, and Ayana dwells on the moon to watch over the night from there. From that time on then, the succession of day and night reigned over life on earth.
Alright guys, I want to take a moment here and apologize because I have no idea what I'm doing here. I'm playing on an OLED TV panel and all I'm seeing is darkness, no pun intended. So please don't understand that all I'm trying to do here is to get a torch and find my way down to the staff.
of Narim, golden symbol of the sun.
protected by the incantations of the priests, was safe from the orcs and the bloodthirsty trolls. But its sacred interior was desecrated by skeletons and the living dead. Foul creations, and abominations of nature, which offended by their very existence the purity of the Tony. Centuries thereafter, the temple was fitted out as a fortress, where the great smiths of old forged the finest of weapons. Nergal, the maker, chose the safety of the volcano to preserve the black gem, the sacred obsidian. But as the years passed, the fortress fell into disuse, and the gem was forgotten.
continued to thrive under the power of the cult's dark deity. Yuri Sabrik, the black spider of obsidian, has remained hidden, but now it is finally free from danger. Crossing mountains and steppes, jungles and deserts, you shall reach a secret valley where a large river runs. Close to its bank there is a temple, only the chosen ones shall find it. For when Ayana cast her spell to expel the gods from the earth, she wanted to save her temple from desecration, and so she used magic spells to conceal it from view. Now you are in Ayana's favor, perhaps you shall be her chosen one.
So this is the moment I wanted to show you guys. I didn't pick one of the sword signs on purpose until I left, only to get one of the possible dialogues of the sword. And I shall explain myself better after the cutscene. Alright, so we've got one of the dialogue options and you can sort of gather that she kind of forces herself to help you, and this is a crucial moment. In the world map you will get the option to go back to Tel Aleph and pick up the missing sword sign, but on the other hand, you can make your way to the Tower of Sorcery. If you are looking to complete all the achievements, you will need to do it both ways. Another thing that you shouldn't forget is to get the sword sign back to the temple and trigger the second dialogue and that way receive the second skill for the sword. Just keep one thing in mind, if you want to see how far you can level up, this is pretty much the way. Leave all the sword signs the first time you go through the game and then come back for all the demons, the vampires and the chaos knights. Prince of Darkness began to manipulate the primordial chaos to create a new being. And how, before it could be dominated, the being came to life and became independent of its creator. And how the Lord of Chaos was between the gods.
interpreted the signs. Look beyond the darkness, and you shall find a new shadow. where he draws up battle plans for his army of abominable creatures. The power of the goddess has uncovered his place of hiding, and it now falls to the goddess chosen one, the light of light to defy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
is Mescalandag, the Lord of the Arcontes, the Scourge of Urbade, and the Perdition of Nippur, Master of the Thousand Dead.
succeeded in destroying me. The time has come for you to meet your destiny.
your life, and with it the life and light of the gods that are held within that
And here we are at the end of our fifth playthrough. You kept talking about this release, so I left my editing on that other game I'm working on and just dive right into this one. Now to answer the question, is this a remastered version? Unfortunately it is not, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. You don't fix what is not broken, right? From what I've gathered, this game was in some kind of dispute between companies about the owning rights for it and I guess that the dispute came to its end and got resolved somehow, I don't really know the specifics, but I think that it's just another release to get people more familiar with the title, and if it manages to sell well, who knows what happens next, right? What I can tell you is that the game was much more stable than the version I played before, I didn't experience any crashes, but I did notice some bugs. I don't really mean any groundbreaking bugs, but some cutscenes wouldn't appear to be working like the original ones. For example, you would stand still at the cutscene while originally you were supposed to walk away from the camera. Small stuff like that. But there was one bug that completely enraged me and I really hope you guys didn't encounter it, but every time I would face some challenging foe and this boss music would start playing, I could hear these static crackling noises that kept intensifying the longer I dragged the battle. Another sound issue that I came across was in the abyss. After challenging the couple of golems at the start of the map, the soundtrack of this battle kept haunting me for more than half of the map. It would only stop after those four skeletons would come up the stairs with their dramatic music. I tried to restart the map a few times, relaunching the game, and nothing seems to fix this issue. So obviously the sound department got a bit messed up. But these are my main complaints. Now for the things that I welcome with open arms. I did mention that the game is stable on modern systems, but another welcome sight was the addition of resolution options. I turned that puppy on 4K and it felt like the textures were better, although I don't really know if this release had any upgrades in the visual department. V-Sync was added to the game and it might not sound like much, but trust me, it will enhance your slaying experience. Now diehard fans would immediately notice that something is off in my other videos, and they would be completely right. The older version of the game had an issue with its aspect ratio on modern systems. The game would appear to be deformed and it's mostly because I had to do some editing to turn a recording into a watchable video. But that's all I have for you guys. Overall it's hard for me not to enjoy this game and I was really glad when it got another shot on Steam. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and the release of the game, if you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'm Alex and I'll see you guys on the next one.